we're going to do a lemon wedge today. Um, yeah, so I'm going to get started. I'd like to turn the screen around so you can see my uh, desk desktop. And um, I wanted to start by showing you my little goodie box here. Um, I When I have my desk set up, hi, Mary, how are you? When I have my uh, desk set up, I have all these things kind of within hand, hand's reach. And when I'm teaching a class, I usually have a big, hi, Dawn. I usually have a big bin and it's in my bin and I pull out like my little bag of tricks. But since we've been doing these lives on a regular basis, I have my desk set up here in my studio. And I just wanted to show you, maybe you could think about it. Instead of having that big box, I just have this little box of my goodies. I have my water that I use to prime my paints. I put a little drop of each uh, water in each color to get the paints primed and ready to go. I have the salt in case I wanted to use salt. Um, I put a pencil sharpener in there so that when my pencil needs sharpening, uh, that little piece of saran wrap we used when we did the kiwi, I have that in there. Tape to tape my paintings down, scissors, eraser, uh, sponge. Sometimes we do some uh, techniques with sponge. And then I have a little mister that I keep on hand and a credit card. Um, these are all just fun little tools. I've got the magic eraser, a candle for some waxing. So if you um, decide you'd like to really take up this watercolor and you're really enjoying your lessons, maybe think about putting the stuff you need right at hand. So when I say, oh, we're gonna do some sponging, you have your sponge right, right there with you. Um, some of the techniques that we talk about in class are, are uh, tone value, we talk about feathering, blending, we talk about stippling, we talk about hard lines uh, today. And then, you know, we talk about how to, to make some trees. There's all sorts of different lessons. This is the brush one. I did a free one um, last week. And here's with masking fluid. So there's all, all, all sorts of little tricks that you can do when you are doing watercolor. It's very fun. It's not all just water and paint. You get to play with some other tools as well. Today we're going to do a lemon, or excuse me, a lime wedge. So the colors we're going to use are um, emerald green. Turn down and brighten it up for you. Uh, emerald green, and then we're going to use a yellow green, and then we're going to use a little olive. And the olive I made by mixing some green, and then I added a little bit of uh, blue to it. And then I added just a dab of brown to it, just a dab. And went back to add a little more green. And you kind of play with it till you get this color that you like that's kind of an olive. So um, it's fun to play with colors. Drawing, this is, a, this is another one that it's not a lot of drawing skill involved. Definitely look online. Hi, Bonnie. How are you? Um, guys, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me okay. If I'm, if I'm, uh, if you're able to hear me, make sure we're doing okay. That I'm not just by myself talking. I want you guys to hear me. Um, so the lemon wedge is just really. Uh, we talked about sketching yesterday. Remember when you're sketching, you're just lightly dragging your pencil across the paper, and to get this wedge shape. Because if you draw with a really hard line, ah, thank you, I got the thumbs up, awesome. If you draw with a hard line, you won't be able to erase it and it'll leave a mark in your page. So you really don't wanna draw hard. Um, I'm gonna draw a little light line here because I want that wedge, I want the, um, the rind of the line to show. So again, I'm kind of sketching it and going to the point and this is a loose, line across the top. I have, remember that little box that I was talking about? I got this little box of all my goodies. In my goodies is the eraser. So when you're going to paint, hi Allison, hi Shirley, hi Christine. Um, you're going to want to uh, erase some of those lines so they're not too heavy drawn. If I drew really heavy with my pencil like this, really heavy, you'll see that is really hard to erase. It's really hard to get off your paper. Um, some people like pencil line showing when they're doing their uh, 
when they're doing their watercolors and some don't that's really up to you i think they think if you can see the lines that shows that it's a drawing that's really personal preference and it's up to you but i still would recommend drawing light like uh like this one just really light all right um and here we go we're going to we know that a lemon or a lime is a wedge shaped like this and we also know that it has some of these little segments so i'm going to lightly sketch them in because i, I really don't want to uh show that but the center is here that segment could be a little bit sometimes they're big segments see if i had drawn really hard that would be hard to erase i would like an extra little segment in there because i want to but you can look at, up a picture online um I'm gonna do like a segment here and then another one like right here because I want this to be the center. And I'm light, really lightly sketching it in. And <clears throat> a lot of times I would like to draw first. I draw my, my drawing maybe on a separate piece of paper. And then when I come to the main drawing, um, I already have in my mind what I want it to look like. So maybe I don't have to draw all the lines. I can, I can put them in because I know that's where they were or where I wanted them. On this one, I don't really have to put those lines in. Maybe I want to indicate where that beginning is. And I would like this to be a little rounded, okay? Um, the, the line wedge is actually easy than you think. Hi, Diane, how are you? Um, it's easier than you think because it's you don't have to put a lot of hard hard work in there you're just gonna just like get a hint of the idea this is a little bit of water first i'm gonna do the green part first on the rind i'm putting a little water down first that's a it's called a wet on wet technique you can tell i've been practicing because my uh color came out a little a little green because that's what my water is i do have two waters I, I don't know if you see them here but there's a, a dirty water and then a clean water and i really like that you have both waters you use your um your color and then you wash it off after you're done using it and then stick it in the clean and then you can move to a different color i tend to dry my brushes off too as we go so try to keep get used to the two. You don't have to, it's not a big deal, but it does kind of make it nice for you. I'm using this yellow green first and I'm just gonna lay a nice light wash. I'd love it if you guys were doing this along with me. I hope to see pictures. Uh, post it to Art Yourself Studio, the main page that you're on right here. You can just post it right here. I found that special group was hard for people to find. So I'm gonna, uh, I deleted that group and now we're just gonna post it right to it. Do you see how I'm just laying the color in? And to me, that's really, really bright. I'm not sure I really want it bright. So if that happens, you have two things you can do. You can have a paper towel in one hand and you can dab it up or you can just take your brush and just slide it across and scoop it up and wipe that color off on your paper towel scoop and wipe I am using a number 12 brush this is a nice skinny 12 you can go as small as this one my favorite brush size let's see if this is it I hope it is yep my favorite brush size is a six and for these kind of paintings on this little um, paper a six is really good but I'm also used to using this big one right now and happy using it practice with both of them when you're using a big one on little paper, just use the tip more instead of the whole belly of the brush. And just kind of have fun. I'm scooping up that color. I do want some lightness in there because I want a little bit of a, um, a differenti differentiating the, oh gosh, Allison, help me. Is that a word? No. <laughs> I want to make the background a little, the uh, green just a little bit different. I'm going to take that six brush. And I would like to take a little bit of this emerald green because I'm going to get a little bit of the detail and the texture. I want to uh, differentiate the background. <laughs> I'm going to call you Allison when I'm done. Anyway, here we go. I'm going to pull that in there. I want you to pull some in on yours. It's not all perfect and even. It's kind of loose because that's just what's going to give you some texture. 
and that that shows that um Oh, I love it. Thank you. It's coming across loud and clear. This is a great solution because I can see you and you can see what I'm working on. I love it. Um, so I plop those colors in, but I'm going to take some water on my brush and put a little water in there and let it move some. We really like it to be, when you're using watercolor, it's so fun that you can just kind of move it along. Um, you see I have a little bit of control because I'm keeping the water in in the area. I didn't just put a bunch of water down and then try to control it. It's really hard to control. So by keeping the small little area, I'm able to keep a little more control. Um, a lot of people don't like watercolor because they feel like they can't control it. Uh, if you work in small segments, you have a little better, um, I, better option to control it. The next color I wanna do is I'm going to take this, uh, maybe this olive green or this light green here I think that last one was just, it's too yellow. I want one, I'm gonna mix the colors up a little bit. I don't, you can see my colors here. I've got this one, this is called Hunter Green. Hunter Green, I like that richness in there. Um, that's also a nice color to purchase. It comes in a tube. It doesn't really come in this paint group. So we talked about those segments and I drew them here. So I'm gonna put the segment, I'm just going to use my paint and I'm gonna lightly outline that segment. Now there's no drawing on there. I do wanna leave part of the rind that's gonna stay white and I'm just gonna lightly fill in a little piece of it. You see, I didn't use a lot of water. I cleaned my brush off and then let's look, we can just push this color a little bit, maybe leave some white in there. That's kind of fun. Leave some white and push and drag and that's really defining that shape of that part of the uh, lime. And look, I'm gonna leave some of that white, white in there. I think that kind of adds some interest. I would like a little more yellow in my green. I'm gonna put a little more yellow in there. So for this next one, I would like to kind of uh, leave some spaces. Let's see if I could do a big one. Here's a big wedge piece here. Let's do a little more green there. And Kind of, I lightly outline it and then take some water and push that color around. But let's leave some white sections in there. Let's just leave it kind of loose and some white sections as a, as a, um, to show the segments. The segments are the little pieces. They're like little, Oh, how do you describe it? Kind of like a, a water balloon, <laughs> much smaller. So they're like uh, oval shape and they're filled, filled, filled with yummy juice. And they tend to stack against each other when they're filling in the lime. But these are the things that just pucker and pop when you take a bite into the lime. So um, a water balloon was the only thing I could think of. You guys have another idea. Oh, that seems a little silly. But... Let me get some more, okay. So I made the little segments. I'm just, I won't put them in this painting, but I'm just giving you a little, um, I'm just gonna outline it a little bit to give the seg even the segments a little bit of detail in the inside. They're kind of yummy. I love them. They're good in lemon too, in the lemon too. I think it's, I know what it's called, the pulp. I think when it, you buy that orange juice that has the pulp and your kids say, no, I don't want the pulp. <laughs> so that's the pulp. Those are the segments. But here I just gave a little hint of it. And that's what's so fun with watercolor is you can, you can do that. You can just give a little hint of an idea. You don't have to color everything solid and, and firm. I'm outlining this because I don't have that pencil. And I think uh, the outlining gives it a little better definition, but I will leave some open so that those, to indicate those segments. I do need a little bit of yellow in there. I think that would be pretty. Um, and now I'm just putting, dropping the water in. And if I don't want that hard edge or that hard line, you just put the water next to it and pull it out. You can pull that, that edge right out. And that way it's gonna be soft. It kind of blended in. There's a lot of water there. There's a couple things you could do. You can leave the water and let it dry, or you can take your paper towel and pick it up a little bit. And I'm gonna, um, I'd like to have a little more detail here. So I'm gonna put some more of these little 
drops of the green in there and let them bleed out a little bit. But that's what's so fun about watercolor is you can, you have the choice, you can do whatever you want, it's fun. Uh, if it gets too messy and too watery, just take your paper towel, lay it over the top, pick it back up and and then start again. It's it's like perfect. You don't have to get all frustrated. And sometimes if I've done a whole painting and I'm really unhappy with it, I'll save it. I'll save the painting. I'll do it again till I know I really like it. And then you can use the paper for a mixed media project. You can put paint all over it and use it for mixed media. So you really are able to do a lot with it. It's not for not. If you don't like it, don't worry. You can use that paper again. This is mixed. This is a, a mixed media paper that I'm using. I really want to add a little more yellow. I'd love it to be a little bit lighter. I'd like to have the variations. Green is so fun because you can use blue in there. You can use yellow in there. You can make it olive. Like if we had the olive here, you can. Um, there we go. Yep. Um, let me see if I can just get another little watery wedge here. And I guess when you're painting, um, it's always really good to just take a minute, sit back and look at it. I do like how that is making a hard edge there. By adding that water, the first layer of green, this water pushed to that first layer of green um, I think now because I like the texture that that gave me, I might even take some of that salt that I had in my little bucket here, that my what I call a fun bucket, <laughs> and um, I'm going to drop a little bit of salt on there. You can use any salt. This salt I just happen to have. I've got like thick coarse salt. When I do silk painting, we do it on a thick, uh, I use a thick coarse salt, and that'll really pull the the paint around, but this is small. It's easy. I can keep it in my little box in my little um, archers in my little studio. So when I'm doing watercolor, it's like right here. I don't have to go searching for it. Uh, you can use any salt. I'm just having this so you can see that you can use table salt. Um, so when I'm looking at this, I see that the these two aren't really well defined. You you can leave it like that. You can make it more defined. It's so fun. It's your painting. You can do whatever you want. This is our, our painting book. This is our practice book. So we don't have to show anybody. It's our dictionary. We're writing down terms. We're writing down different techniques that we're using. It's our practice. And I'd love it if you have a book and you show me how your book is turning out. This is lesson number five. So um, you should have probably all the other ones too. I did save them. Um, we did a watermelon and we did the pear and we did a lemon and then we did a kiwi and the kiwi lesson was a little funky. Um, I think it was the, um, internet was funny. So if it's really, really bad and you don't want to watch it, just let me know. I will do that one again for a freebie at another time. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Jennifer. So I will happily do that again. But somebody did do it. They did it by themselves after the lesson because I leave these up for a little bit. And they, um, they, they were able to, they were successful. They posted it. So make sure you post yours in the Art Yourself uh, Studio in this page here. Just post it below or send me a comment. Let me know what you think. Is there something you would like me to do a lesson on? I'm happy to do anything. I'm just going to outline this a little bit. Uh, I love how it's coming out. I do feel like if I took my handy dandy little color scope to show, I do feel like this lemon or the lime could have a little more value change. So I see some value change in the segments, but I would like to have a little more value change on the rind. You see it in color, but what that does is that kind of makes it in black and white for you. So to make a little more texture, that makes it exciting. When you have a medium level, a dark level, and a um, light level, it just makes the paintings pop out and makes them dimensional and a little more exciting. So I always use that little uh, guide there. Um, sometimes when I'm painting with my students, I'll do a, a wash, a light level, just to have it on your paper, and then a medium level, and then the really dark level. This will help you see it best. 
Yeah, so that's really dark. So that'll give you a lot of dimension if you're painting circles and, hi Monica. So there you go. Do you see the, the different levels? The light, the medium, and the dark. That gives it that gives it more um, excitement and more interest when you look at a painting and you say, "Oh gosh, I really like that one." That's probably because they did a really good job at putting these three layers in. Uh, sometimes it's hard to do it when it's in color. Sometimes the color is a little deceiving. It's kind of a value tone. Values. I love how light there is. That light in there. Um, this one has seemed to be all one color. So now I'm taking the green. I'm gonna take this green and add a little blue to it because I would like it to be even a little richer. Yeah, maybe I'll just go straight blue. Sometimes it's fun. You can just decide on by yourself. You just try it and let me know what you like and what works. It's a little painting, so it can be simple. It doesn't have to be really involved. Let's just add some dimension in that. There's a salt. The salt is working. The salt will probably, when it's dry, you'll, you'll be able to see the results with the salt. Um, right now, it's still pretty soupy wet. This one, I'd like to add a little bit of yellow to it. When you're doing watercolor, it's really best, see, I can kind of blend it in and lighten up that yellow, but it's really best to start with the light colors and then add to dark. When you're painting acrylic painting, or oil paints, you can you can build on top. You can build on top of the layers, and you can start with dark and then get lighter and lighter and lighter. But with watercolor, you've got to start with light. That's your base. You start with the light and you build up. It's you can't go light. Once you go dark, you can't go light on the watercolor. I see that I'm going to reshape. I'm just shaping this little wedge here a little bit. Do you guys have any questions? This is our number five lesson. How fun is this? I can't wait to see our books. Everybody's gonna have a little book with all these in it. Please post them to Art Yourself Studio so I can see them. I'd love to see them. I might outline this a little bit. Each, each week we're gonna do a different, a different topic and um, right now we're painting exactly the item, but as we go further along, we'll paint other things and we'll be able to block it in with backgrounds. And um, yeah, we're gonna play. I'm just showing all the little tricks and secrets that I use in my classes. Um, my students can tell you. <laughs> I'm gonna start a new series in the, the, in the fall. So I have a lesson session one, which is nine lessons. And then I have a session two, and then I have a session three, which is more advanced. And that's just six six lessons for the advanced. So um, we're gonna start the whole new uh, series. They're, the ones that are going right now are continuing. They're gonna continue through the rest of the summer. But I'm really loving this online. Uh, if you guys are interested in it, let me know. Uh, I would happily set one up. I've got a couple ideas of some dates that we are gonna do them. Let me see if I have the book. Yeah, I'm thinking in the, in the, um, in the fall, I've got a um, Wednesday evening and a Monday evening. So Monday would be beginner. Wednesday would be the uh, second level. And then the advanced, the, the group that's going right now is on Thursday. Um, they're in the second level right now, and they're going to go advanced at um, Thursday at 1 o'clock. So I have a Thursday morning open. It can be a beginner or it can be a advanced or a medium. Whatever you guys need or want, I'd love to... Uh, I'd love to have you join me. Let me know what your interest is. Just write it in the comment. Tell me what you're thinking. Tell me how you think this broadcast is going. Um, let's check the time. We're good. We're It's 325. If anybody has any that they got, they were able to do with me, please show me. I'd love to see it. Um, yeah, so if you, if you have any ideas or anything you want to... Um, Anything you want to work on, um, just let me know. I, I'm happy to, yeah, paint whatever you want to paint. So, um, yeah, I'm just looking for ideas. Make a, send a comment, write a little comment in there for me. Um, if you've done your painting, please post it to artyourselfstudio.com is my website. Art Yourself Studio is the Facebook page. Um, even if you're not live, I'd love if you post it. I will be looking at these for the next 24 hours 
and uh, I would love your input. And thank you so much for joining me. Oh, it was really, really nice to have you. And I hope you're all well. Have a great weekend. And be sure to show me your uh, paintings. Okay, bye.